This video is designed to assist non-radiation workers in understanding correct procedures required when working in areas where radiation materials and sources are or could be present. During the video, you will follow a non-radiation worker, Joe, as he prepares to enter a radioactive work area. A non-radiation worker is a person who does not perform radiation work, but has unescorted access to laboratories approved for radiation work, materials, and sources. Non-radiation workers who access radiated areas need to be trained in radiation safety and awareness. This video provides non-radiation workers basic awareness level training on radiation practices for Idaho State University. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify basic radiological fundamentals, including biological effects, identify the relative risk of exposure to radiation and radioactive materials, identify measures implemented at ISU facilities to control exposure, and understand individuals' rights and responsibilities related to the ISU Radiation Protection Program. During this training, Joe will illustrate a step-by-step -step example as he prepares to work in a radiological area. Hi, I'm Joe. I work here in this radiological lab, but not with radiological material. Like you, sometimes I need to enter areas where radiation work is conducted. So it is important that I know and understand what goes on in these areas, as well as my individual responsibilities for safety. I don't want to get exposed to radiological sources if I can avoid it, and you don't either. I do want to be sure that I perform my work safely while working in this area, and that I am aware of radiological hazards and how to minimize them. The last thing I want to do is put myself or anyone else at risk. Before entering the lab, I need to contact the person in charge. In this case, it's Karen. I will ask her to give me a briefing of what radiological work is being performed and find out about any other safety requirements before entering the lab. Karen will review this survey information with me before entering the area. The radiation survey points out areas of high and low radiation exposure rates. Sometimes workers entering controlled areas may be required to wear a dosimeter if the area has been defined as a radiation area. Dosimeters record radiation exposure received over time. If a dosimeter is required, you will receive additional radiation safety training. If you have questions or concerns about the radiation present in the room or risks involved with being exposed to radiation, now is the time to ask. The person responsible for the area can give you this information. Radiation and contamination surveys are performed routinely in radiological areas and are well documented. The person in charge is also responsible for familiarizing all workers with these surveys so everyone can be aware of their own safety. Radiation areas are not places to hang out. To minimize your exposure, never loiter in high radiation areas. This will help maintain a dose as low as reasonably achievable, called ALARA. The basic ALARA principles are minimize your time in the radiation area, maximize your distance from the radiation source, and shield yourself from the radiation source to reduce exposure. There is some fundamental information you should know about the risk involved with radiation and radiation dosage, and how ISU ensures as low as reasonably achievable radiation exposure for each worker. Radiation is classified as either ionizing or non-ionizing. Ionization occurs when enough energy is supplied to an atom and an electron is removed from the atom. The resulting atom will have a positive charge. It is invisible and not directly detectable by human senses, so radiation counters are required for its detection. Ionizing radiation comes from radioactive materials and radiation-producing machines like X-ray tubes or particle accelerators, and it is present in the environment. It has many practical uses in medicine, research, construction, and other areas, but presents a health hazard if used improperly. While low exposure to radiation has no measurable effect, extremely high levels of radiation exposure may cause damage to living tissue, skin burns, radiation sickness, cancer, and even death. Non-ionizing radiation does not carry enough energy to ionize atoms or molecules. Examples are radiant heat, microwaves, radio waves and ultraviolet light radiation, and light. Though the risk is extremely low if you follow these guidelines, some amount of risk still exists when working around radiation. 
So you should question anything that doesn't seem right. If something doesn't seem right, it is your responsibility to ask. 100 milligram per year is the radiation dose limit for the general public, including anyone not classified as radiation users. The state limit is actually higher, but ISU is more strict, limiting exposure to 100 milligram, in line with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, the agency that issues ISU's radioactive materials license. ISU is very conservative in its approach to minimizing radiation exposure to workers. The annual dose for Americans is around 600 millirems per year. This exposure comes from medical, industrial, and natural sources that we all encounter in everyday life. Joe has now completed the basic training required for accessing this radiological lab and is now ready to enter the area. He has made sure that he has the right dosimeter, if one is required, and he is wearing the proper personal protection equipment. After entering the area, take a minute to get familiar with all postings and instructions. It is your responsibility to obey all radiological and safety signs, postings, barriers, and procedures. Here are some of the most common ones you will encounter. The three-bladed radiation warning sign indicates a source of radiation is nearby. Magenta and yellow rope, tape, or chains indicates a barrier for radiation protection purposes. Tags and labels provide specific information about radiation sources. Yellow plastic wrap or bags may be used to handle radioactive materials. The storage containers like these should always be marked with a label that reads, Caution, Radioactive Materials. And instruction signs like these provide guidance on safe work practices. Once you have entered the area, check your surroundings and identify all exits, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, emergency contact numbers, and the location of phones and spill kits. Although several procedures are in place to protect people, it does not mean we should let our guard down. As non-radiation workers, we should always maintain a questioning attitude. When you have a questioning attitude, you question anything that doesn't seem right. Then take the responsibility to act. A healthy questioning attitude demonstrates that you care for your own safety as well as that of your colleagues. What does each of these situations have in common? They are conditions that, based on your training, should not occur and where you have the opportunity to exercise a questioning attitude. Even though radiological areas are inspected and surveyed routinely, it does not mean that unusual radiological situations will not come up. As non-radiation workers, we should always be alert and concerned about safety issues when working around radiation material. There may be hazards that don't look dangerous, but can be harmful. Because I always maintain a questioning attitude, I will be proactive in responding to unusual conditions, like this spill I discovered. Be aware of situations such as spilt or uncontrolled radioactive items, leaking pipes or hoses, liquid on the floor, etc. If a spill is noticed in a radiologically controlled area, then take WIN actions. WIN stands for warn, isolate, and notify. Warn others that may be in the area. Isolate the area so that a person does not unknowingly step into the spill area and notify emergency response personnel to control the spill. Do not attempt to clean the spill up yourself and do not handle radioactive materials. Hey, there's some kind of liquid on the floor over here. Jared, will you call someone to clean this up while I guard the area? If you find a spill and no other lab workers are around, then make the proper notifications and guard the area until emergency response personnel arrive. Let's review what we've learned. As a non-radiation worker, always get permission before entering a radiological area. Only enter radiological areas after you are properly trained and approved. Do not bring unapproved people into the area. Obey all postings, barriers, instructions, and procedures concerning the lab area. Be sure to practice ALARA to minimize exposure and stay alert while in the laboratory. Question each situation when things are uncertain or just don't seem right. Keep a questioning attitude and take responsible actions that keep both you and your colleagues safe. By following these simple guidelines, you can stay safe as a non-radiation worker while working near radiological areas. Stay safe.
and I'll see you in the lunchroom.